If you've ever tried to nail realistic skin or wax in Blender, you know how crucial subsurface scattering is. The good news, Blender 5 brings a big upgrade, I mean to subsurface scattering, compared to the Blender 4 series, and it is something a lot of Blender artists are excited about. So what is this update all about? Before we continue, I want to let you guys know that the super high market is going through its biggest sale of the year. So if you want to get some add-ons, texture packs, courses, you name it, it is the best time to do so. And if you don't know where to start, I have in the description of this video a list of some of the best add-ons and courses out there. Without further ado, let's jump right in. In Blender 4, the subsurface scattering in cycles used a random walk method that was already a step up from the old techniques. But you know, it had some quirks. For example, if you had separated pieces of geometry with subsurface scattering, like a character's head or a separate ear or an eyeball, you might have seen dark seams or maybe patches where those parts intersected. Many artists found workarounds. Some actually switched the shader to the other Kristen Burley subsurface scattering model, or even merged objects into one, just to avoid these black artifacts. Essentially, the old random wall subsurface scattering in Blender 4 only allowed light to scatter so much, almost like it took one hop inside the material and then stopped, which could make thick or overlapping areas look too dark. It did the job, but it wasn't perfect, often requiring extra tinkering to get it right. But Blender 5 Cycles Renderer introduced a more advanced random wall subsurface scattering algorithm, which supports multiple bounces of light inside the material. In other words, Light can now bounce around within skin, wax, or any surface material several times before escaping it, just like it would inside a real object. And this is a big deal, because previously, after a single scatter, a lot of light energy might get lost. But now, those extra internal bounces keep the light going. And the immediate benefit is that it eliminates the unnatural darkening which used to get in areas where light couldn't scatter enough. So those pesky black seams or maybe you can call dark patches, are largely gone. So as you can see, the new algorithm basically recreates, or better recreates, how light scatters inside a semi-translucent material, stuff like skin, marble, or milk, and you will notice your subsurface scattering materials render with a softer and more evenly lit look, which is a huge step forward. Now, it is worth mentioning that these improvements come with a slight cost in render time. The phrase multiple bounces isn't just for marketing. Those extra light interactions do mean that your machine has to work a bit harder. Blender devs actually have noted that the new subsurface scattering is more accurate at the cost of more render time, which I believe a lot of us are gonna be paying happily. In practice, if you're using a lot of subsurface scattering, like a scene full of characters or translucent objects, you might see renders taking a bit longer, and it is not typically night and day slower. Let's just say maybe 10% longer when heavy subsurface scattering is involved, and even more sometimes. But the good news is that for most cases, the trade-off is absolutely worth it. You get visibly better results without having to resort to crazy high subsurface scattering sample counts or manual fixes. In terms of workflow, the improvement actually simplifies things, simply because you no longer have to employ weird tricks or fix subsurface scattering artifacts. And you can trust the principles BSDF subsurface scattering to behave, well, behave physically more correct out of the box. So you know you can build a skin shader knowing it will look consistent and artifact free in different lighting setups, which is a huge plus, especially for animation and VFX work, where lighting conditions change from shot to shot. So, as you can see, subsurface scattering has always been a key to realism. And it is one of those things, when done right, you almost don't notice it. The skin just looks alive, and the wax just looks soft, but when it is off, you definitely notice. And by making subsurface scattering more accurate, Blender 5 lets artists achieve a higher level of realism more easily. And this actually matters not just for still images, but for the entire rendering pipeline. So if you're integrating Blender into a film or game cinematic, subsurface scattering means you get closer to real results without wasting a lot of your time. And there you have it guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to this channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching. 
and I'll see you in the next one.